Assalamualaikum and good day everyone. This is Ms. Zahira. Uh, in this video, we're going to talk about chapter 1.4 which is exploratory data analysis. And I'm pretty sure that everyone has once in their lifetime seen charts. Well, of course you have seen charts. You know charts. There are many types of charts out there. For example, histogram, pie charts and bar charts. Well, you use all these charts to graphically represent your data to better understand your data in a simpler way. And in actual fact, there are many more advanced charts that you can use many more advanced charts in a way that they can tell you more about your data distribution for example we have the stem and leaf plot and also box plot now why do you want to represent your graph using these advanced charts and whatnot well it is for you to understand about the, your data distribution and it, it is also for you to discover if there is any gaps in your data and it is also for you to be able to discover some pattern in your data so that you can make important decisions and important conclusions about your population. Well, for example, if you, you can identify there are gaps in your data from the graphical representations, then most probably you're going to have a skewed distribution and this will affect how you make conclusion for your data. For example, if you have a symmetric distribution, the best measure of central tendency to use for your data is mean and the best measure of variability is standard deviation. But if your data is skewed, then the best central tendency is median, while the best measure of variability is interquartile range. So what type of data would most likely have a skewed distribution? Well, a data set that has outliers would most of the time be skewed. Outliers. Okay, so now let's start talking about outliers. Let's say I have a sample of a college students, okay, of university students, right? So from these groups of people, I collect one variable. So let's say I collect about their weight. So I want to know about the weight of a university student. So perhaps these are the response that I would get, you know, uh, somewhere around 45 to 70 plus plus kilogram. And suddenly, from my data collection, I get this value, 23 kilogram. So this is, this seems like very small compared to the other data. So you can see 23 is like much different from all this value. If I can try to represent this data, represent this uh, different using a number line. Okay, so let me use a pen here. So let me try to sketch a line. So let's say this is a number line. So I have here 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, and 70. All right. So my data is somewhere around 48 until 71. Why don't we try to plot each and every data that we can see here? 48, 50, then I also have 71, 57, 65, 56, and 52, 69. Am I missing anything? <laughs> okay, so, well, most of the data is like they are clustered here from somewhere around 45 up until 70. They're all clustered here. And suddenly, I have one data value at 23, which is really far away from the other data. So this is not normal. So most probably, this 23 kilogram here is an outlier. Why? How did we come across this outlier? So what possibly could have happened during the data collection, right, that caused this number to appear in my data set? So probably it's an error in observation or in the measurement itself. Probably the weighing scale used is not in a good condition, right? Or maybe it is a written or typing error. Maybe the person wanted to write down 73, but then uh, the one who record the data, like, uh, mistakenly you read it as 23, right? So it could be a written or a typing error. Or it could be because the subject which participate in that uh, data collection is actually not in the population defined. What I mean is probably 
there is a um, primary school students who uh, participate in the data collection process, right? So this could have lead to the um, this extremely low value of data compared to the other data in the set. Or perhaps, perhaps it's true that there is a student, a university student with 23 kilogram weight. It could have occurred by chance. So maybe this person has some, I don't know, some health issue. Maybe ni macam orang kerdil ke? I'm just uh, stating out the possibilities, right? So outlier may occur in your data collection uh, based on these four values, right? So if it is uh, an error and if it is not a subject in your population, then you should just omit this value from your study, from your uh, uh, case study, yeah. But if it, is, if it is true that there is a person in your population in your sample that has that data value, so perhaps you would want to put it aside and do another research on that, on why this person has um, a variable value that is very different from the other groups, the other people in the group. Okay, so that is outlier, an extremely low value, or it could also be an extremely large value in a data set, right? So in statistics, uh, we have already determined a way for us to like identify whether or not a number, a data value is an outlier in the data set. So this is how you determine outlier. So imagine you partition your data into four partitions, okay? So this is from your smallest data value to the largest data value. And let's say if the lower boundary of your data, of your data set is here, and the upper boundary of your data set is somewhere here between your Q3 and your largest value. So any data that belongs in between this, any data value that is greater than the upper boundary, and any data value that is smaller than the lower boundary is considered as outliers in your data set. And this is the formula for you to calculate the lower and upper boundary of a certain data set. Okay, uh, for lower boundary, it's Q1 minus 1.5 multiplied by the IQR. For the upper boundary, it's Q3 plus 1.5 multiplied by the IQR. So let's jump into the first example for this video. So this is an example which I created by myself. It is not provided in the slide in Kalam. Uh, Pamael divides his cows into two different types of breed. He then recorded the amount of milk produced in a month from a sample of each breed and the data are as follows. Okay, so these are the amount of milk produced by cows in breed A and these are the amount of milk produced by cow in breed B. So now let's try to identify, is there any outlier in any of these two breeds? So before we go and calculate um, the outliers, I mean the lower and upper boundary for each data set, why don't you have a look at both data and then try to figure out, do you think there is any outlier in breed A? Okay, so just keep that to yourself. And what about breed B? Do you think there exists any outlier in breed B? Well, perhaps 105 seems like an outlier because it's like extremely large from the rest of the data. Mm, so let's try uh, and determine this using the lower and upper boundary. So first, we're going to calculate the lower and upper boundary for breed A. So in order to do that, we first need to know what is quartile 1, quartile 3. And uh, let's start. First, you have to arrange your data in ascending orders as uh, shown here. And then we go and find Q1, which is X1 multiplied by 9, which is the sample size divided by 4. And then we get X2.25 and you round up, it becomes X3 and the third data is 74. So this is our Q1. And followed by Q3, uh, similar method. So you round up to X7 and 79 here is our Q3. And by using the formula shown in the previous slide, we calculate the lower boundary and upper boundary for breed A. Okay, then we get 66.5 and 86.5.
So how do you decide whether or not there exists an outlier in this set? Now, let me draw a number line. So there it is. Okay, so your data starts from 70 up until 82. Okay, so what about the boundaries? So let's sketch the boundary. The lower boundary is 66.5, which is smaller than your uh, data. And the upper boundary is 86.5, which is greater from your data. So let's check. This is your data. So let me change the color of my pen, not to be confused with the boundary. This is your data. Okay, your data is from 70 until 82. So, do you have any data value that is greater than 86.5? No. Do you have any data value that is smaller than 66.5? Also, no. So, every data value is within the boundary 66.5 and 86.5. So therefore, there is no outlier in this data set, okay, since all data is within the upper and lower boundary. Okay, so let's move on to the second set, which is breed B. Uh, again, you need to arrange in ascending order and then calculate Q1, calculate Q3, and then determine the lower and upper boundary using the formula given. And using a number line, you can understand the position of your lower and upper boundary among your data value. Okay, so this is your lower boundary, 58, which is smaller than your minimum value. And uh, the upper boundary, which is 90, is actually um, smaller than your uh, maximum data value here. So let's check. Do you have any data value that is greater than 90? The answer is yes. 105 here is greater than your upper boundary so 105 is an outlier okay so let's check one more uh, on the other side do you have any data value that is smaller than 58 no right because the smallest data that you have in breed b is 59 so there is no data smaller than 58 so in this case breed b has one outlier which is 105 Right. So, but uh, in fact, okay. Let's say if I change this uh, value here, let's say I change this to um, one hundred. Okay. If this is the case, then your breed B will have two outlier because one hundred is also greater than one hundred. Uh, no, I'm sorry. One hundred is greater than ninety. So in this case, both one hundred and one hundred five is an outlier. So that's how you determine outlier by using lower and also upper boundary okay um since data uh, val the data value 105 is greater than your upper boundary so 105 is an outlier for this data set okay so next we're going to look at how to draw a box plot 